Bear on Bears fans, welcome into another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. And it's so much better after a win, Lance. Bears get it's an ugly dub. 12. This was a this was a 2006 Chicago Bears win, a 12 to 10 win. The <laughs> offense got it done at the end, but most yeah. of that game, I, I said on the post post game show, we got the last four minutes in this game that we were supposed to get in the Detroit game. Boom. I, I'm glad you I'm glad that that was your thought process. You know, it's a you know, it's 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 a, we're, we're building a team. We're trying to pick, put pieces together. And uh, now we you know, we 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 had 56 minutes last week. Yeah, we needed that last four minutes. Well, we got those last four minutes uh, last night. Yeah. That, I mean, listen, we we needed it. Got to talk about what we saw from the quarterback. I have. What I think uh, people will probably say is an interesting take. A lot of people will probably say um, that it's a cop-out take for Justin Fields, but I don't care because uh, who cares what people say? And that's yeah. what people say. Shout out yeah. uh, Travis Kelsey. Uh, yeah. I, I, I want to talk about Getsy's game plan. Talk about this defense pressure burst pipes. Mm. 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 Is that a pause? Is that all no, 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 of the no, Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button. You're solid. <laughs> Subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago sports or Chicago Bears daily on this channel. Leave that five star review. Y'all know what to do. Lance, your initial takeaway from last night's game was what? Uh, I, 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 I love the, the, the resilience, you know, um, number one, the, the way the defense played and is just out standing yeah uh, you know they were they were all over the field they were flying around they were taking the ball away like uh, that linebacker play like that linebacker play <laughs> man, a little bit last back, night. Well, them backers were down heel okay it, it to me it's it's um it, and it's 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 been a it's been a, a gradual process uh but it's been a consistent process and the yeah. thing that the one thing that i think we were missing the most is the takeaways and the takeaways have really started Jumping up since Montez Sweat came into the into, into the form, only okay. eight, only it, eight. Oh, right, you know what I mean. And, and so <laughs> we, three weeks, right? And so, and so it 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 raises the the question of you know what are what exactly are are you know are we looking at in this yeah. draft? Yeah, you know what I mean. People talk about this draft. Oh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, Caleb Williams. Oh, yeah. Drake May. All oh, these guys. No. Do you guys realize the effect of Montez Sweat being added to the defensive line? Yeah. The pressures, the sacks, the interceptions. Now, let's flip the script. All right? And talk about the offensive side. Hold on. Right? I, I might have you on that one. You got that? Uh, no, the sound didn't play. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Mine was pretty good. You know, and now we add, let's add the offensive Let's go to that offensive line. That that line. Let's go get that guy from Penn State. Yeah. Or the guy from um from Notre Dame. Those guys right there. And let's continue to build these this line up. Then we become dominant. There's yeah. a misconception of all these skill players. It's 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 a it's flash. It's flash. It's just flash this. But the the truth is the 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 real winners, the real champions are right there in the in the lines. There's my my uh my producer on the breeze, the super producer Joel Holt. Shout out to him. Uh he he's he's literally made this his thing because I, I love what MHJ brings to the game, especially going into the draft. And he's like, name me a number one wide receiver that won a Super Bowl for his team. Like somebody was drafted top five. And all the ones that you see are not on the original teams that they were on. Keyshawn Johnson, I believe, is the last one who was drafted that high. Mm -hmm. who contributed to a Super Bowl, but that was with the... Who do you, who'd Keyshawn went with? The Jets, right? Yeah, yeah. Keyshawn no, was with the, the, Jets. Bu the Bucks. No, he was drafted by the Jets. He won with the Bucks. I'm telling you, I Bucks. got it backwards. I was like, the yeah. Jets definitely haven't won a Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, he, he ended up winning with the Bucks, not the team he was drafted with. So what I think it, I, I say all that to say it speaks to the point of where you need to be looking, where you, yes, you would love to have an MHJ. I would love to have Marvin Harrison Jr. and Darno, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, and uh, DJ Moore. But I'm still on the trenches, and I think that we saw something last night, especially after Tevin Jenkins ends up getting banged up, that my opinion on Justin Fields is whatever, he's a good enough player that whatever game plan you ask him to run, he yeah. can run it. 
Mm -hmm. He ran what Luke Getze wanted to run last night. What I think he's not, and where a lot of people look at him as falling short, is he's not a great enough player to overcome inabilities in a game plan. I think that there's a lot of the great quarterbacks that we look at that mask the mistakes of the coaches in certain moments. And, you, and you'll see him on the sidelines, right, where the coaches just go, whoa, all right, yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, whatever we can get out of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Justin Fields is there yet. And the question is, of course... <clears throat> Are we going to have the time for him to become that with what Ryan Poles is? He's not Ryan Poles guy, all of them. Yeah. But last night, 27 for 37 on screen passes for 217 yards. The fumbles I'm with, Let's we could talk about the fumbles. I'm here. Yeah. Everybody that's here to criticize him for the fumbles. The yeah. second one was stupid. Sly. Yeah. Stop trying to be a running back. Sly. Well, it's a, in that situation, in that situation, they, they get off the field if he doesn't um, – they're pretty much going to be off the field if he doesn't get that first down. You know, there's a high level chance that man be yeah, off the field on that. That's on that. true. He was going for, he's going for the first down. I understand hey, that. Hey, now, but more importantly, he got off honestly, the field anyway. Lance. You gotta, I mean, listen, it's, it's his fault. You got to do yeah. that. Uh, Cole Komet's got to get that block too. Cole Komet seals that block, we get the first down. Okay. I mean, but but, but <laughs> again, crazy. He, but it doesn't excuse him getting the ball yes. popped out. It doesn't excuse him getting the ball popped out. I understand that. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm really happy that uh, the defense did what they did. Why'd yeah. you just get a thumbs up? What was that? No, no, no. I was just, um, I was just. No, no. Like a thumbs up bubble literally just popped up in your screen. Really? <laughs> did oh, somebody I, like a message that happened and it actually put it on your screen? Man, that's crazy. I don't know. Some, I don't, that's some weird hacker stuff right there. I don't know about that. That's next level. All right. <laughs> Can't wait to see that. Yeah. Uh, but, but to, yeah, like I, you know, I, I was happy that the defense, played the way they did, and they were able to get the ball back to him again because it really set up the perfect scenario. It was it was the the fumbles, and then and then every, I'm, everybody's probably up in arms, like, this is over. He did it again. Yeah. And get that last drive without any timeouts and drive them down. Yeah. And put us into the win, to, in a position to win the game, and we win the game. That's what we're asking for. Yeah. That regardless of what happens, regardless of what happens, as long as there's time and we have the ball, we can win that game with him. That's yeah. more important than anything else that everybody's looking at. And he put I the people that want to kill him. Here's the here's the part that pisses me off, right? When people evaluate Justin, and I get it. The fumbles are the fumbles. He can't we just talked about it. He can't have those moments. The part that pisses me off is the fumble last week. Every player pretty much came out after that and was like, Darnell Wright got killed on that. Maybe Justin can step up in the pocket and help him. But fans were using that as the, this is why. This guy's always fumbling. It's 32 seconds left. Your defense gave up a 12-point lead. You weren't able to get down the field. In this situation, he fumbled twice. Bad fumbles. Bad plays. I thought that yeah. there was a couple of third down passes as well where you basically got your wide receivers killed and you didn't have to put them in that position if you put the ball on the money. But he drives you down the field. Why don't we then give him credit for what he does in his successes? Well, here's the other thing we have to understand. Like, this isn't, you know, the, the Detroit Lions defense that we played uh, the week before yeah. is they their style of defense, what their scheme is different. All yeah. right. And you have to play the offenses. Like, we all understand offenses can only do what defenses allow. Right. And okay? that's how it works. Like, people don't understand. Like, you think everybody see this, oh, man. This guy's he's he's just shredding this defense. Just because the defense allows it, they're probably very undisciplined in their in their techniques and their fundamentals. Okay. Yeah. Now the defense that they played against, they put six, seven, sometimes eight guys on the line of scrimmage. They blitz fifty-seven percent of the time. Yeah, that limits what you can do offensively. Now it doesn't say you should you should throw fifty-seven wide receiver bubble screens, you know what I mean? But that's Luke Getzey's call, okay? However, it limits what you can do. You don't yeah. get the ball out quick, or you have to have to send, keep everybody in, protect, and you only get to send one or two guys on routes. Those are the things you have to do, that, you know what I mean? And so I, I would have liked, actually, a, 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 a slicker uh, a, a run game uh, game plan uh, yeah. than what I, what, I, what I saw last night. But it's it, it and, and I think sometimes people see, they just see the quarterback and they don't see, you know, oh, he's only doing this. Oh, he's throwing the ball. Why? Where's the deep ball? Where's this? 
You don't have time for that when they're blitzing so many. There was no time. So much. I, I saw people last night like, why isn't he running play action? Because play action takes time. Like it takes time to yes, you get your you hand off, turn blitzes, around. You get killed there. You get killed in play action. Let so me let me ask you this, right? Because you mentioned something about Lou Getz's game plan. I want to I want to get it from the defensive mindset of this, though, right? Because everything on paper. I think we can look at a lot of things that Luke Getzi has done and said, on paper, it's right, right? Last week, on paper, you should run the football at the end of that game yes. and hope to run the clock out. That's yes. not the situation that we're in. On paper, it makes sense to run screen passes versus a blitzing defense. Here's my question to you, though. How much easier does it make it for the defensive side of the football if you know we, I believe they blitz 57% of the time. We threw screen passes 46% of the time. So almost every play, you know, if we blitz, they're going to screen. How much easier does that make it for you to sniff out the screen and attack it? Well, the, for, for screen plays, you know, it's you, it, it, screen plays, you, you stop screen plays with effort, especially bubble screens, you know? So for us, you know, or, or, or if I'm, if I'm coaching the defense, um, um, and our quarterback, you know, he starts to drop back and, and our D line, they, they they let our D lineman go and then he throws it or he grabs it right now. It's easier, honestly, if he grabs it and throws it to the bubble right now, because we're always just gonna break to that sideline right now with the, with enough with everybody getting effort to the ball. He shouldn't get he shouldn't he should get back to the line of scrimmage at best. Yeah. So uh, that's, it's that's how you beat it. It, and it, it seemed like they had that thought out all night, right? Like, and listen, there was issues to me with the blocking on a lot of those screens. I thought on the first play, why is Cole Komet the one catching the screen and not blocking on the screen? I thought that there was a couple where EQ just basically whiffed on his block, and you could see right after, like, even EQ was like, that's on me. I don't know if he was dealing with something this week or not, but it's it's just – it seems like there's no counter in the game plan for Luke. There was no adjustment. There and was that, no adjustment, and they and they kept going back to the screen, 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 screen. screen. Yeah. Listen, at this point now, defensively, oh, I'm going to cheat a little bit to the side because I'm pretty sure you're. This is where you're going. Yeah. And and that's I I think that's my point, right? Like it seemed like at at a certain point, Brian Flores was like, "Watch for the screen every time we blitz." Yeah. That's easy. That's easy. If you're making it easy for the defense. I I'm, I would like to see an, a, a, some sort of adjustment. You know. Yeah that we're going to do do something a little different here. It um, is it is concerning to me that it seems like every week with Luke Getzey, there's something, there's so many moments where like, I, I, I look at that last drive and the first drive of the game and I'm like, the play design is beautiful. Like, this guy actually, like you see the plays, you're like, okay, and he's using this to offset that. He's throwing the defense. I'm like, I love what Luke's doing. And then, you just get to those moments where it seems like he's just, okay, we have to be conservative in these moments. And that's why, to me, I look at Justin Fields and I say, you know, I feel like he's good enough to run the plan at hand. 27 for 37 for 217. Muzz are going to look at Fields and say, that's on you. He completed 70% of his passes, 43% or 46% of them were behind the line of scrimmage. And we're <laughs> upset that guys didn't break off major plays when a defense knew they're probably running a screen pass here. Yeah. Like that makes the defense's life easier. That means the numbers. Are, I, I will have the conversation with everybody on Justin all day about mm -hmm. fumbles. Because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's up to 36 turnovers, and he's only started like 38 games. Mm -hmm. a lot of turnovers lost. Yep. We yep. got to have that conversation as well, but... I just I see a quarterback who's running the plan that the Osei is putting in place that the coaches are putting in place, and that to me I can't kill him for what a lot of people would say are the sins of his OC. Yeah, I, I mean I agree with that. I certainly agree with that. Um, you know, it's you know the 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 game plan from a week ago. You know, against Detroit was 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 great. You know, and at times you see things you see Getsy uh, make. Make some calls just like at the end of the game, you know, or opening drives typically pretty, pretty doggone impressive. Yeah. Uh, those calls, but uh, um, uh, it's the adjustment that, that throughout the game that is, is, is a little bit bothersome for me. And, you know, um, it, it, you, you, if, if, the, if these, if there's 
if there's 15 throws that are behind the line of scrimmage, those are called. You know, those aren't those aren't those aren't audibles. Those yeah. are called, okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a part of the game plan. You threw it 15 times, that's a part of the game plan. You're like, but no, we threw it down the field. Okay, well, you get in there in front of that that Vikings D-line and, and, and blitzers and linebackers and safeties that are lining yeah. up, and and you you try to figure out which of them are coming, which of them are not coming, okay? There was a game plan in I, I, I saw for that, you know, and a lot of times, you know, even him trying to get the ball out early, yeah, you know, to get somebody a chance, you know, it, you know, I, I like I like the decision that he made, but shit, he still didn't even have the time to do it. Yeah, you know, it it was tough. It was really tough to make so to make those plays. And I I gotta I haven't been able to dig into the all twenty two just yet. There's a couple of plays into the game where listen, holding the ball. I I don't understand holding the ball for six seconds behind the line of scrimmage. We see it a lot in the league now, mm-hmm. but it's just like you're setting something up. For you to get killed or for you to take a sack, and we saw that a couple of times yesterday as well from Justin. Uh, I Listen, offensively, oddly enough, right, they got the job done at the end of the game. You got yourself in position. Cairo knocks in the field goal. I love it. We got to talk about, though, where are you at on flus? Because I listen every time you're on with Cap and Jay Hood, and it sounds like you are fully on board with this guy's got the defense figured out. He's got, getting pressure now, and things are working. Bring him back. Change nothing. I mean, what? Uh, I, I again. I'm. I'm. I'm about. I'm about this team. I want this team to be a championship team. Yeah. All right. And and just because the the coach isn't the 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 guy that that is appealing to the city. Yeah. You know, doesn't mean that he isn't the coach that the team needs right now. You know, and so what I'm seeing is a pro, is is progress. I'm seeing progress yeah. in this but team. You can't deny not, it. Eight turnovers not, in you, two weeks. We got progress. You got progress. You yeah. know. You know. And the thing is, is, is I'm not here to to compare him to the Eagles or the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. All right. What I'm going to if you're going to compare compare him to the Carolina Panthers, you know, whoever the top the bottom teams are in the league, and then you see where we're at. Because you can right. see that, because because we could be in a lot worse situation, okay? We could be a lot worse situation, you know. And so I look at I look at our progress, and they have a number one uh, quarterback. They have the number one quarterback over at Carolina. Yeah, right. Okay? They have, and he doesn't have anything around him. And you see the success that he's having. You have you have C.J. Stroud, who's the anomaly, okay? Him, Patrick Holmes are the anomaly. All right, those are the generational talents. Right. All right, but nobody saw them as the generational talents as the first round pick, they were overlooked. So, so for the bears to, to go out and, or anybody say, okay, well, we got to go get these. We have the number one pick. We got to go get the, the guy that's going to be the guy. The generational picks weren't pick number one. Yeah. They weren't the people that they thought were generational picks were pick number one. And they're not, they're not, you know what I'm saying? That's what I just I'm, love that everyone's a generational pick every year. It's the throw funniest that stupid thing in the world. Throw that stupid name out so that we can't, we can't pass this guy up. Get out of here. All right. You want to talk about generational type of talent? Yeah. Go get those interior guys. All right. Go get the interior guys because the interior guys, they shut down the anomaly. Yeah. That, 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 that Eagles defensive line, they shut down the anomaly. All right. They put them, they put it on them. If you want to have a chance against a guy like that, you better be ready. You better be prepared. I um, think it's very I think it's very interesting the comparison with the Eagles too because we of course the defensive line right that defense is stout I think our defense is coming into shape but when I look at the offensive line like I at the last couple of weeks I've really focused in and I, listen everybody and their mom is making you do it basically because uh, apparently he's the most talked about center of all time but you look at Jason Kelsey's game and you see how much easier, now with everybody else involved as well, but you see how much easier he makes it for his teammates. I thought that play, one, I didn't know he's calling out basically where the mic is. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, like you see Jason center. Kelsey, he's like, he's there, like, no, we're not doing that. And Jalen Hurts, the play where he comes up and he's like, we're going to the right. And he's like, no, we're not. You're not changing me. We're going left and I'm going to throw the block. And you see it get break for a big play. That's how important that line play is, right? Like, those guys make the quarterbacks look great. Those guys make the DBs look great. And I think that's the part where because they're not – because they're not the sexy names, they're not the skill position guys, Yeah, you don't want to see that. And then you look at a situation like Cincinnati where 
oh, they just drafted Jamar Chase and they played together. So they went to the Super Bowl. And it's like, listen, I said this right after they lost. I said, I hate that they didn't get that one because they may never get back again because they have no idea how to put an offensive line in front of Joe Burrow. We're now, what, four years from there and he's had his second season ending injury because he's getting killed in the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Yep. Uh-oh. So. Uh, I want to see him continue to attack the trenches. What do you think of Montez Sweat, who is in those trenches? Fun to watch. And his his effect. His, you know, listen, we market value. Boy, that market value can do something for you now, right? You know, people get upset There's about a little that market value. For Michael Lombardi there, Lance. If we were yeah. going to pay him that much, we could have got him in the offseason. We could have got him in the All right, right. Yeah, come on. You know, and that, to me, is also uh, a sign that uh, the that polls, you know, they know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they know what they're doing. And I and I, I and I, you know, I applaud that and I hope that they continue to do what they're doing. Don't don't listen to don't listen to us. Don't listen to what we all want. Don't listen to all this stuff out here and outside in here. Yeah. You, know, you know, um um I think the outside the outside noise has uh done enough damage to the decisions that are made that have been made to the to the bears over the years. You know, um we're and I ain't even saying that I'm not even saying that I'm right. What I'm saying is that that Poles is a former football player. Yeah. You know what I mean? An old lineman at that. You know, um, you know what you have. You know what you're building. Continue on that line. You know, do what you feel is best. Because at the end of the day, as angry as we might be about any of the decisions you make, you bring home a winner, we're going to love you for it. Everyone's going to love you for it, period. And that's that's the one thing, right, where everybody's like, you can't miss on another quarterback. Look at what C.J. Stroud is doing. I... Everyone, I, I, it feels like, and, and I'm a part of it as well, right? I want to see a great quarterback in Chicago. But what I want to see is a team that wins for more than one year in a row at a high rate. That's able to put up 10, 12 wins multiple seasons in a row. Yeah. And, Every year. And no matter what, right? No matter the team that you talk about, when you talk about those teams that were super bold dogs, yes, they might have the quarterback, but you have to talk about the linemen. You have to talk about the defensive line. You have to talk about the offensive line. I look at, literally, San Francisco has the last dude in the draft playing quarterback. And they've subbed in Sam Bradford a couple of times. Dave, listen, look at look at the success of the Baltimore Ravens. You know, the, the Baltimore Ravens, yeah. uh, they, you know, they, they built a team. They had a quarterback that came in, uh, Trent Dilfer, that just managed. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't great, you know. He was a he was a decent quarterback, you know. They had those years. They had years where they didn't get to the Super Bowl, but they were still a competitive championship competing team. Yeah. They had some down years. They come back, you know. Even in those down years, they, they were still a a, a a playoff contending team. Yeah. Then you get Joe Flacco in. They go to the Super Bowl. They win it. Then you know they go to another transition, but they're still a championship competing team. Yep. Then they get Lamar Jackson. So you do. So what I'm saying is, you know, it's it's this for them. It's not whew, here yeah. down here, you know, because they're they're and they transition players out really well to me. Yeah. But they build, they build the right way. But I think even I I look at the right the Flacco to Lamar situation, I, and I wonder. I to me that's the biggest issue that we currently have here in Chicago right now is the number one thing that changed about that was John Harbaugh's willingness to adjust. John Harbaugh had to basically adjust his entire, right? Like he swapped out OCs. Like he had to adjust his entire mindset of like, oh, you're not just the pocket passer that's going to stand back there and get murdered if I don't have seven dogs in front of you. Mm -hmm. You can do more than that. I don't think that we have that here in Chicago right now. And that's my only concern with coaching. I love Flus as a D.C., I can't deny it. You got him pressure, and all of a sudden, his defense works. And his defense has been okay for most of the season. Bad by your standards, right? But I think they've allowed 21 to 24 points outside of, like, a couple of those wild games, right? The the game versus the uh, Kansas City Chiefs absolutely got away from them. But a lot of those high-score games was an offensive turnover, a fumble, a strip sack. Uh, yeah, that, that ended up going for touchdowns. A defense in the modern NFL that gives up 21 points, you should be able to go out there and win if you're able to score on the other end with it. This Bears, this Bears team right now. 17. 
se- se- uh, 17. I like it, right? Like, I'd rather have 17. 17. And listen, with what we're seeing right now, pressure wise, we're getting the 17 that we're looking for. But I think that we come in here too often, and it seems like the coaches can't adjust off of what's on the piece of paper, right? Luke Getzey's game plan was screen passes. It was. Yeah, it <laughs> they was. blitzed. Yeah. We got screen passes. All right, okay, what else, man? Do, you know do the we, screen do, passes coming. Do we, let me ask you this. Do we need, do, do, you, do we have to have Luke Getzey if Amber Fliss is the, the head coach? That that is no, because right, like you guys went through multiple OCs. You don't. I'm not. I'm not saying that you do, but to me, the mindset that we've seen from Getty has been also very much a reflection of the mindset we saw from Flues. We saw the conservative game plan from Detroit, but we also saw the conservative game plan on the defensive side or, or from Luke Getty. We also saw the conservative game plan from the defensive side where Flues just went, yeah, give him the middle of the field. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that they've kind of they've kind of been in lockstep no. with the mindset. You're, well, no, I mean, you've, I've seen Luke Getzey, uh, um, I've seen Luke Getzey, or not Luke Getzey, I'm sorry, I've seen Flues on the defensive side make, yeah. try to make certain, certain adjustments, you know yeah. what I mean, especially try to dial up blitzes from his yeah. linebackers and we hit home more, you know, there are things that you have to do when you don't have a, a, a dominant three technique, you know, and you, you want to get pressure with four, but you yeah. can't get that kind of pressure. You know, and and so you you leave your DBs out to dry a little bit there, your your back seven, you know. But but the the linebacker play really picked up. Yeah, we saw a jump in in the production from the the defense when that linebacker play picked up. We saw an increase in blitzing, uh, and and then you start to you add players like uh, uh, Montez Sweat. Yeah, and you start to see very dominant type performances. Yeah. So you know we're 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 trending up. We're trending way up in that direction, and you add a few more pieces to that defense. 100%. We're going to destroy teams. Yeah, we're I mean, listen, it, destroy teams. I how much credit do you give him for being able to run this defense without a three technique? All of it. Like it, it's it's honestly, I, him I and his staff, him it. and his staff. I give all of it. It's very insane to me. Like people, I think people kind of overlook that. They're just like, he should be able to get pressed without a three technique. This defense shouldn't work. It's a. It'll be. It'll be difficult. It'll be difficult. You know what I mean? Now, if you get a guy that has to be accounted for right there over that guard and that tackle right there, man, I'm telling you that. And then you have a guy that's to the to the right of him. If he's on the right side, the guys that are right of him, he's gonna get that one on one. And if that's Montez Sweat, you know what I mean? He's gonna. These guys are gonna win on this side. Right. Somebody's coming. Somebody's gonna get there. And if they don't, the ball still has to come out on time. Yeah. I I think the biggest question, probably the biggest question for most Bears fans is. Even though he may be the right DC, is he the right HC? I've seen a lot of guys who can coordinate a heck of a game. It's too late. It's too late to to change him from an HC to a DC. So, oh no, I, I'm not the, saying swap right, it back. So, yeah. so, so, my, so, my, so the deal is, is this: do you do you want to keep what we have as the defense and what we're building as the offense, or do you want to chart over, or do you want to start over? That's what. It, that's where we're at. Right. That's what every every Chicago fan has to, to come to grips with. All right. All right. Well, let's keep the players, but get rid of the coaches. You're gonna change. You're gonna change so much. You guys, every every yeah. every coordinator is different. Every coordinator, every philosophy, all of that stuff is different. And what they're doing right now is going to change. All right. Yeah. So it, and, and 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 that's not gonna make means that everybody's gonna fit. Everybody's gonna play well in that. We're pieces away. From, from, in my opinion, we're pieces. Of, we're definitely pieces away from being a destructive number one all around defense. Yeah. We're a few pieces away offensively from being a force, in my opinion, and that also includes coaching. It, and and that could be the case, right? Like maybe maybe this is more of a Lovey Smith situation where it's like that's not the OC that's going to get it done, but we like what we see on the defensive end. I just I. I've seen growth from Flus this season. I, heck, I can't. I, I kind of seen growth from Getzy as well. I just always. I think the biggest question is: Is that growth going to go towards okay, consistently being at the top, consistently getting you those ten win seasons? I think you have more talent on this team than they've gotten out of. And I think that now adding Montez Sweat accentuates a lot of the defensive talent, different things like that. But I look at the offensive side of things, and I. I see a game plan that on paper makes sense. 
Mm-hmm. But on paper, it, listen, we say this all the time. Like, on paper, don't win football games. Do we have guys in place that can call the right plays that when the paper's thrown out the window because somebody made an adjustment, yeah. I can go back and be like, what you got for me? Okay, you got that? Not a screen pass? Let's do it. Yeah. And just add a slant. Just one slant. All I want to see is one slant. Why does he hate slant slants? That's all I ask. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, you know, they. I don't know. It's it's one of those deals. I, and I heard somebody over saying over over saying that you know why can't he run a slant? Why can't he run a slant? You know, um, um, when you have guys that are on the line of scrimmage that are you don't know which one of them are dropping. Yeah. All right. And you run a slant, you're not going to see that guy that's dropping, and he's yeah. going to be a pick. And he's going to be a pick to the house. This is actually a play. That's actually a play, a similar play like that when we were in the championship game against the Packers, and uh, B.J. Raji picked it. All right. Yeah. Uh, 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 Peeled that uh, bandaid off. <sighs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, but you know what I mean? Like everybody, like, yeah, a slant sounds good. But when you have guys on a line of scrimmage that are dropping, a lot of times that quarter, a slant puts, a, puts you right in position. It puts you right in the lane to pick the ball. Yeah. You know, an outside play. So when you saw a lot of those plays, they would, the receiver would drive up and then print that foot to come back. And yeah. Side play guarantees that you have a one-on-one out there, and you can you can try to win that with the back shoulder back shoulder uh, hitch. Right. Okay. So there's 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 meaning to the the play calls. Right. You know, there's meaning to the play calls and things that, that people are doing, or, or that that gets is doing, or these coaches are doing. You know, we're trying not to put our our defense or offense in a position to make make uh, grave mistakes. Yeah. This particular defense. Does it feel like? In your mind, right, maybe there's still a disconnect between the QB and the OC because we don't see that more. Slant, just, I mean, not slant, uh, the, the bubble screen just feels like the safe play, right? Like you you brought up the risks of the slant. Okay, we don't want to do that. Bubble screen them to death. There, there was something that they did that I really liked. Um, what they did was it was like a, a kind of like a generated kind of screen type play where mm-hmm. uh, just Bills would get the ball. And he would start backpedaling. He would start backpedaling, backpedaling as the pressure would would uh, would would try to would get closer to him. Right. It was like uh, Cole Komet would chip. He would chip, and then he would come off across. This was that. Here's your here's your slant yeah. or yeah. your drag. Here's your drag. Yeah. And slant. I thought, especially when they were bringing the pressure, this was a really good call. And I watched him as going. I was like, this is kind of like a simulated screen. Right. And as he's coming back, he's drawing them in, and he'll just jump it off to uh, uh, Cole Komet. Cole Komet can get big yards from it. That's a great play. I really love that call. We I, well, we saw we saw that once in the in the first quarter, right? Didn't we? wasn't that on the first drive? It was. It was, I thought I saw. Well, yeah, the Cole second Komet, drive. Cole Komet, Cole Komet had shoot about eight catches. Yeah, had about eight catches. I think most of them came in the first quarter, but in the fourth quarter, third or fourth quarter is when I saw this. I feel like I saw this play. I, might, I think it was in the fourth quarter when I saw it. Might even been a third. I'm not sure, but but I was like, man, I I, really, I like that play. That's good against this defense. Against what they're doing. Had had to be in the first. Had to be in the first half at some point because they only had one catch for four yards in the second. Yeah. And so I mean, like I I I think that there's ways. I think that's what I what a lot of Chicago Bears fans have issue with though, right? Like you literally sat here on the podcast. That's very different when you're on the field and stuff like that. But you can sit here on the podcast and say versus a defense that runs this. I would give you the you've given me four options with us sitting here. Mm-hmm. Luke has gone with one most of the season when it comes to playing a blitz and even this is not a different game plan than what we saw the first time we played the Vikings. This is yeah. a little bit of a different game plan than what we saw versus Detroit when they blitz, but they didn't blitz as much, right? Like there, yeah. there's this is who Luke Getzey is. And the question that a lot of people are looking at is if this is who he is. And this is who you're allowing him to go out there and be week in and week out. Is that doing a disservice to your quarterback? Because, I mean, to me, he ran the game plan to perfection, but you still come out of it with 12 points because you're not running plays to me that get you in the end zone. Yeah. I don't know. The, the one area that I, I was probably most disappointed was with the, is in the run game. You know, and you have that many guys up there on that line of scrimmage. You know, you you know where your immediate threat is. Yeah. Um. You know, and and uh, if they drop out, if they drop back. You know, we should be moving forward. You know, and get them on skates. You know, the the reality is that we we really have to 
our job is really to create a crease. You know, we create a crease for our running back to to uh, to gash. And if we can create that one little crease, we are at the second level. We are 20 yards down the field. Yeah, because nobody's back there. <laughs> absolutely. Right, right. So if you want to play a high-risk defense, then you have to know there's going to be high consequences with it too. And right. especially you, there's, there's holes right there in that run game. That's what I would have liked them to take advantage of that, and I didn't see that. Yeah, uh, that was a little disappointing. Yeah, it, it's it's it doesn't make Brian Flores afraid to blitz, mm -hmm. right? Like it, like that, that's what you almost want. You want to be like, okay, you can blitz. Like, I where's a quick ram play? A quick. I always think about, we would, think about we would blitz Aaron Rodgers, and it'd be like, that's Aaron Rodgers. You know mm -hmm. he's gonna make you pay if you don't get to him in the first three seconds. Like, mm -hmm. this is a very dangerous move here. Right. And of course, right, he's able to get it down the field. And then all of a sudden it's like, maybe we should stop blitzing. Good job. Yeah, you know I mean, like right. it, it, we, we didn't do any of that. Like they were just like, yeah, we can blitz all day because they're not looking to attack us. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. it's it it I thought that it was I'm glad the Bears got a win out of it. I think <laughs> that as many people think, right, it was a very flawed game plan. It was, uh, it was an ugly win. It was an ugly win, but sometimes you, know you gotta get them. You can you can you could have ugly wins when your defense plays like that, you know. Uh, I, 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 what I would like to now, you know. Listen, the, there's levels to this thing, you know. We ask, they were, they were, they were getting off the field, playing great defense, getting stops, and we said, got to take the ball away. So now they're yeah. taking the ball away. Now you have to understand from the defensive side that you can't just take the ball away. Yeah, you have to score. Did it? You did it feel good? Yeah, you have did, to did score. Did it feel a little familiar there, Lance? Did but, it? Not? But it, but it's that, but if you don't have that mentality, then you're leaving you're leaving crumbs on the table. You know, you shouldn't leave one crumb on the table. You know, yeah. and and defensively, you have enough power to win the game by yourself. You don't need the guys in the other room to win the game. Yeah, they can make it really hard for you. They can make it harder for you. But if you take the you take control of what you have, you guys can. They had how many takeaways they have? Four takeaways on the day. I his do, does the last play not count as a takeaway? The last the last because they did the laterals and technically we came away with what would have been a fumble, but it doesn't. Oh. It, it didn't show up on the sheet. But that there was also like cool. seven fumbles on that play. It should. Uh, there was a. There was a. It was a. It was a penalty because it was a, a forward lateral. So uh, see, I, did they accept it? I thought they declined it. I thought they declined it. Maybe they accepted it. Okay. I think, yeah, I'm not sure, but it's uh as soon as that no, no, you you yeah. I'm not sure if they would have had to replay the down. Right, yeah. But yeah. I know that as soon as that forward that'll happen, the game was over. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> so but, it, but I, I, I don't know. It was it was one of those where but we ended with four takeaways. That's the point of the game. Four look, takeaways. I thought there could have been a fifth in there. I thought we got shorted one. Though who which guy was it? Uh, Brisker, I think Brisker was the one that had the 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 run back, the return. Was it Brisker to have the return? He had a return, a short one. Yeah, yeah. he had a short, short one. one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Edmonds I, I, got one. Hold on, let me. I yeah, get, I know I Edwards confused. got one. I know Edwards got one. Edwards got one. I'm sorry. Um, Monte or nope, Montez, relax, Pat. Uh, Brisker got one. Yeah. Kyler got one. Kyler, I believe, had the the short return. The re so what it does show me when I was watching the return is they're not practicing returns. You know, they're not getting the ball. They're not returning mm -hmm. it to the end zone because he goes away from everybody. All your blockers are right there. Yeah. You know, you, you stay to those numbers, you get your blockers and you read your blocks, you yeah. know, let them get you into that end zone. And you go out, when you go to that, that open green, that's the worst place for you to go because that's where everybody can go get you where none of your help is. Yeah. It, Our I, tells, it, you know, there's things we got to work on. We things we got to work on. There's levels to this. It, it, and we're moving in the right direction defensively. Where are you yeah. at on Jalen Johnson right now? I Again, I think he's he's a really good DB we haven't had the takeaway numbers. Now we're starting to get the takeaway numbers. Where, where's your your gut feeling on Jalen Johnson right now? Do they need to come back to the table and try to keep him here? Well, they definitely need to. They, we definitely need to keep him here. He, you know, he has to realize that he's he's had enough footballs thrown to him this year that he could be considered having an All Pro year. Yeah, because the the the, the, the footballs that are thrown to him. Um, he catches those more than likely he scores. He, he probably should have at least four. Or five he should games. have two pick sixes in the last two weeks. Correct. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, and and, and at least two of those should have been to the house. Yeah. So, you know, you, you got to think about the opportunities that he's had and what he's could have what he could have done with those and how yeah. it could have changed the game. You know, when you when you playing like that and you're changing the game like that, yeah. you demand that number. You know, and so uh, I think there's a there's a there's a reality to to you know what he's put out there and um and but it, but he's a i think he's a guy that we do need to sign i think he's a, i think he's a top corner and you see the effect of montez with him being near the ball and all of our dbs being and all of our backs of him being near the ball yeah we add some more pieces you know and i i think the best situation for him is to be franchised allow himself next year to get those the best interior guys and get seven picks five to the house maybe more do this right here every time he gets it. Let everybody know you know I'm that guy, and then you demand that that big do- big dollar. <laughs> what was the move there? What was the move? Oh there? yeah, you know what I mean. You tell him yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I thought it was this. Now we, no, we used to always go to Hawaii. Everybody's always oh, going to Hawaii. Okay. Oh, pro little Pro Bowl, Bowl action. Like, you know. Oh, a little Pro Bowl action. That's, that's mm-hmm. hey, listen, hey, if y'all don't clip that up, you're you're doing bad at your job. That was a great moment in uh, Chicago Bears podcast history right there. Mm-hmm. Uh I love I love what we saw from this from this defense overall. It, it's good to see the defense shaping into form. Need to see more from the offense. Yeah. Uh, as we head into the bye week, what was a Lance Briggs bye week like? When you're, you know, you you've been beaten and battered all this time. Do you go into it still kind of working because you don't want to get too relaxed, or do you go full on? I'm not touching a football for the next week. Uh, it depends on what year. Depends on what year. Well, most of the time, I'm not trying to touch a football. Most of, the, I mean, it doesn't matter what year. I'm, you know, and I when I when I can break, I'm not touching a football if I don't yeah. have to. You know, I'll, you know, there's been times where I would go back uh, to watch my high school in Elk Grove, California. Um, go watch my college in Tucson. You know, that it was um, it, it, it was opportunity. You know, sometimes it was a vacation. You know, sometimes yeah. it was a vacation. Sometimes it was spent in the training room. You know, uh, rehabbing. So, you know, if you're lucky if you don't have to do that, if you're not one of those guys. But uh, a lot of times, I think, I can't think of a time where I stayed in Chicago unless I was rehabbing some sort of injury. Yeah. It, mm. it, that's what Justin, Justin said. He's going back, going to visit with the family, get away. And how do you, how do you then, it, like, is it just a switch that you could turn off and on? How do you lock back in, right? Because I think now you're coming off of a win. To yeah. me, a tough win, a, a win that your team gutted out and you found a way to get it. Now you get this break, but you want to keep that momentum that you built going into the bye week and coming out. Well, the best thing you can do is exactly what he's doing. Be around people that aren't going to judge your every movement. You know, um, you're on people that, that let, you know, you're on people that, that, that love you and, and you, you feel the warmth, you know, um, your, your, your presence is a blessing, you know, around those people. And so um, that's great. That's a good feeling because you can really, you can really, you know, let your, your guard down there, you know, Uh, and on the, on the back end of that, when you know, Hey, it's time to get back to work, you know, it's time to get back to work. Then, then yeah. You know, and and of course, you know, during that time, I'm sure he's going to be, you're going to watch a lot of football. You're going to watch people, what other teams are doing. It's a lot easier when you're coming off off a W to watch other people's successes. Yeah. But uh but then, you know, when it's time to go back to work, you go back to work. You yeah. know, you can put you you know it's time to put that guard back up cuz everywhere I go, the moment that I land, the moment I get to this airport, they're going to be judging my every walk, but the way that I walk, the way that I look, do I look like I'm ready to play next week? Do I look focused? Do I don't look focused? You know, that I'm am I slouching? Am I yeah. standing up? You know, that's that's the world you're, you know, you're you're getting ready to go back into. So uh, you know what you're getting into. You knew you were you were getting into when you start when you as you got up and you said that you're going to play on Sundays. Yeah. So it comes with the territory, but if you're a professional, you handle it. Who was the Who was the player you most enjoyed watching when you were on the bye week? If you were watching NFL football, who was the the team that you were like, "Nah, I'm definitely tuning in to see what he do this week." Ooh, there was a lot of there was a lot. You know, I love watching the Steelers because their defense. Uh, uh, San Diego, you yeah. know, love watching uh, Ladanian Tomlinson, you know, uh, Drew Brees, you know, when he was there, uh, they were always fun. The Niners, back that one, yeah, Drew Brees, the Niners, yeah. the Seahawks rivalry, yeah. you know, them going at it, you know, it just 
And there was time because, you know, these the teams that I'm naming, too, these are teams that probably had the most the hardest hits, you know, on a, on a weekly basis. You know, the Niners defense, they're knocking people out left and right. Seattle, the Legion of Boom, they're knocking people out left and right. The Steelers. So yeah. I'm, really, I'm literally naming, you know, the top defenses in the NFL. You know, I want to watch these guys knock guys out. Hey, that, that's what we watch football for, right? Or that's what it used to be anyway. Now you can't, you know, if you land on the quarterback the wrong way, uh, they give him a pillow and a blanket and they tuck him in. Now you can now you can draft a receiver that's 160 pounds, you know, in the first round, and he's going to be okay. You know, they wouldn't survive. They would not survive. There's no way you can get a guy like that that early when uh, you got guys from the Steelers that are going to knock your top off. Yeah. Period. You come through. You, the you you called the Brady take before Brady even said it. We took we me. Uh, I think EO ended up redropping the clip right that the league is just in a place where the fundamentals are going away because there's not the same fears that people used to have. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, yeah. you, you, I, I, who would you say? I, there's, there was, was it Drew Brees was like the only guy who would dare throw over the middle against you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> there was a few quarterbacks that would challenge us down the middle. You know what I mean? Well, because, well, number one, they wouldn't do it because we had, uh, we had a six, five, uh, uh, middle linebacker yeah, I mean, and Erlacher, you know, what I mean that that he's taking away the middle in our cover too. Yeah. And just you know, he you have to throw it so much higher because of him that our safeties would always make plays on it. They would pick the ball. So yeah, you know, um, um, we didn't get challenged that way. But uh, um, as far as those receivers, like a lot of times, a lot of times, like we, you know, we did our homework. I knew when you were coming in, when the, when the receiver was coming in on a, on a slant route or an in route. You know, and I would tell them, I would call them a lot of times they would, most of the time they would try to look straight and they didn't want to like, they didn't want to break eye contact with you to let you know they think they were throwing you off. Yeah. You know, so I would just call their number out, you know, whatever their, or their name is. I'm like, listen, I see you're trying not to look over here. So I, that better not mean that you're coming in here because I know we're right. If you run this route, I'm destroying you. <laughs> I'm going to knock your head off. You come in this route, yeah. you know, and you'll get that. And they start cracking a little smile. Yeah. Here it comes. It's, 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 uh, it's always fun to go back and watch those highlights of just like it, it, people just trying y'all over the middle. Like, I swear, it, it would be like rewatching them. It's just like, this was, why was this y'all game plan coming into this week? And we're going to, we're going to change you. We're going to make, we're going to make you, your receivers not want to do this. Yeah. They're going to make them not. They're gonna and that's, to and that's them. literally what you would see. It would be like the first half, like they'd be very gung ho. And then by the second half, it'd be like they're slowing hey, up. Man. They're slowing up. They're like, mm, nah, nah. We saw, hey, we saw that a little bit last night when, uh, oh, who was the receiver? Was it Addison? Dang, I, I uh, uh, not, not Addison. The other one, Osborne. Not Osborne. Who was it? Powell. Powell. Oh, had Powell. A, Powell. Powell caught that pass over the middle, and he saw Bojack standing there. He made a business decision. He hit the ground. I said, hey. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, brother. That's a big man coming your way. And, and, and Eddie going Eddie gonna lead with the shoulder. He's he's coming in to, to kill on that. But mm-hmm. let's hope we can keep this winning ways going. We got the bye week coming up this week. So a little bit of time off, and uh hopefully they come back ready to go out there and uh get get you after the Detroit. Detroit team that yep. you should have beat the first time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited, man. I just want to see them continue to build and and to uh, uh, and uh, get get better and build as a team and, and show us continue to show us, you know, that that we're we are a better team. We are inching, inching closer to uh, to where we need to be. Yeah, That's more important than anything else. You got five more weeks to make the rest of this season interesting and see if yep. you can build on the future. We'll see what this Bears team does. Uh, as always, it's your boy Pat the Designer, joined by the great Lance Briggs, the great Lance Briggs. Shout out to Lance. My man. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. One love. Bear down. We'll be back tomorrow with Courtney Cronin for even more Chicago Bears football talk. Peace.